This morning's scripture lesson comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterward he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. He said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, love the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him and suddenly the angels came and waited on him. This is the word of God. So we are starting a new sermon series, which I've called Encounters with God. Six stories of people, or in today's case, Satan, who have an encounter with Jesus. These stories are multifaceted, but each week we're gonna draw on a particular theme coming out of these stories, coming out of these encounters. Themes like love, faith, doubt, worship. Today's theme, theme obviously, is temptation. We center in on Matthew 4, the devil's encounter with Jesus. For context, Matthew chapter 3 ends with the baptism of Jesus. A high point in the life of Jesus on earth John the Baptist is baptizing people in the river, and Jesus goes to be baptized as well. John the Baptist is perhaps uh, Jesus's cousin. It seems clear, at least, that they know each other. For John the Baptist says to Jesus, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now. For it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus wanted to publicly model the behavior of being baptized. And John consented. Scripture goes on to say that when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came out of the water, suddenly the heavens opened up and he saw God's spirit descending down like a dove and alighted on him. And a voice from the heavens said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Thus establishing Jesus publicly as the son of God and paving the way for his ministry to begin. But first, Matthew 4. Jesus is led by the spirit, it says, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Let me read that again. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit to the wilderness to be tested by the devil. That's why he went, to prepare for the trials of the ministry that were ahead. It's interesting for us to even consider that Jesus needed preparation and prayer for what lied ahead, but he did that often. Scripture says that he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. In the NIV translation, it says he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and he was hungry. I ate breakfast at 7.30 this morning. I'm already hungry. 
They say you should never go to the grocery store when you're hungry. Your willpower's low. Don't point at each other. Your willpower is low. You'll buy stupid stuff. But it was when Jesus was hungry, when his willpower would have been low, that the temptations came from Satan. First, he was tempted by food. Satan said, turn these stones into bread. Jesus immediately replied with a quote from Deuteronomy, 3, Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. One does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil then took him up to the highest point in the holy city at the temple and said, throw yourself down, for it is written that the angels will catch you and protect you and ensure that you don't dash your foot on the stone. Again, Jesus immediately responds with a quote from Deuteronomy. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. The third time, the devil took Jesus up to the highest mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the known world and said, all of this is yours. If you will just bow down and worship me. Jesus said, get out of here, Satan, or words to that effect. Again, quoting Deuteronomy 6, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. First, it was food. The devil knew Jesus was hungry. Then he tempted Jesus to prove his divinity by throwing himself off the highest point of the temple. Lastly, the devil offered him everything if he would just bow down. In fact, through all of this, the devil was trying to get Jesus to declare his allegiance to the devil, not the Lord. Each time, Jesus rebuked the devil with scripture and the devil left him. And it says the angels immediately came and took care of him. Let's compare and contrast this temptation story with another well-known temptation story from scripture, Genesis 3. Jesus had fasted for 40 days and was weakened. Adam and Eve are living in the garden. There's food everywhere. They didn't even have to work for it. It was just there. They were tempted at a time of strength and easy living. Jesus was tempted with food, power, worldly recognition. Adam and Eve were tempted with an apple or a piece of fruit. Jesus was uncompromising. Adam and Eve, not so much and they were banished from the garden. Tempted at a time of strength, and they succumbed. There's lots of stories in the Bible of people who were tempted, but chose to do the right thing. There's the story of Rahab, the prostitute in the book of Joshua. She's in Jericho, Joshua before entering, Joshua and the Israelites before entering Jericho send spies ahead. They come in through Rahab's inn and she hides them, knowing that they are men of God. The king of Jericho gets word that there are spies in the city and that they came in through Rahab's inn. So she sends men to Rahab to find out where the spies are. She remains firm at great personal risk and protects Joshua's men. You know the story of Daniel from the book of Daniel chapter six. The king passes a law that no one is to pray or worship anyone or anything except the king. Daniel disobeys and continues to pray to God. He's arrested, he's thrown into the lion's den. Obviously I'm shortening these stories dramatically. He's thrown into the lion's den and the God sends an angel to shut the mouths of the lions and Daniel is saved. 
Some months ago, we talked about the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Again, the king at that time builds a statue and orders everyone to worship the statue. As in the case of Daniel, the king is requiring that everyone worship him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refuse, and they're thrown into the fiery furnace, which killed the men who threw them into the furnace, but didn't harm Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego at all. In fact, the king looks into the furnace and sees a fourth person in there with them. So he lets them out, and they come out unsinged, not even smelling of smoke. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul writes of his own trials and temptations and tribulations. He says, five times I have received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. It was against Jewish law to give 40 lashes because it was was believed that that would kill a person. So they gave him 39. Four times I have received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rod. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked for a night and a day. I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys and in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters in toil and hardship through many sleepless nights, hungry, thirsty, often without food, cold, and naked. Remember, Paul was a Roman citizen. Paul was a Pharisee. He could have chosen chosen a much easier life. The temptation would have been to do so. The temptation would have been to go somewhere and relax. But Paul felt his calling and continued on his ministry throughout the area of the known world, the Mediterranean. You know the story of Peter at Jesus' arrest, tempted to be true to his faith that night. Peter fails. Peter stumbles, denying three times that he even knows who Jesus is. These are huge, epic stories of life and death. Rahab, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Paul, Peter, were all in fear for their lives. The overwhelming majority of our temptations look a lot more like Adam and Eve's. Our times of temptation, for the most part, come when we're not particularly hungry, At worst, we haven't eaten for a few hours. Nor are they life and death situations. It's more like somebody comes and offers us an apple when we're not particularly hungry than it is like us being thrown into the lion's den or into the fiery furnace. And yet, we succumb to temptation. Three times Jesus was tempted, and each time he said, no, no, no. And he quoted scripture to back up his denial. Each of us should consider what our responses are when we come into temptation, when we stumble, when we fail to lead the lives God leaves us, God calls us to live. What do we do when we succumb to temptation? My intent here is not a guilt trip We're not going to pass the microphone around and ask everybody to share the last time they felt tempted and succumbed. Nothing good comes from that. And with God, there's grace. Peter denied he even knew who Jesus was three times. At the crucifixion, he was nowhere to be found. When Mary Magdalene told him that the tomb was empty Easter morning, He ran to the tomb, and when he also saw that it was empty, he left, not knowing what to do next. Yet later, when Jesus confronted Peter after the resurrection, 
This is John chapter 21. Jesus didn't chew him out. Jesus didn't scold him. He told Peter to leave the past behind and to go and feed Jesus' sheep. Three times Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Each time Peter replied something like, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. To which Jesus replied, well then, feed my sheep. Go, Peter, and lead the church. And that's what Peter went and did from that point forward. We can be weak. Our faith isn't always strong. We will succumb to temptation. As I said to the kids, that ain't a good thing, but it's going to happen. These laws, God's commandments that we're called to follow, they're not arbitrary. They're not in place for God's benefit. They're in place for our benefit and for the good of, good of society. Temptation, the power of evil in our world, is real. We see it all over. We see it all the time. But we need not be held captive by it because we serve a God who's far stronger than the forces of evil on earth. When we stumble, when we fail to lead the life we are called to lead, let us not wallow in shame or self-pity. Let us not rationalize our behaviors being not so bad. Let us also not be so quick to criticize others when they stumble. Let us look forward, forever forward, to our next opportunity to serve God, to our next opportunity to show love to our neighbor. Let us go forward giving thanks and worshiping the loving Lord. Amen.